I just finished season one, episode nine of the Orville, Cupid's Dagger. This episode had a lot of things going for it, but I think there were a lot of things that didn't work super well and ended up just making the plot seem a little bit convoluted. So I'm kind of going to break down the episode and then talk about the things that I liked and disliked and what I think might have worked a little bit better. So the overarching plot of this episode is that the Orville has to facilitate peace talks between the Navarians and Druidians, two species in conflict over a planet that they both claim to have colonized first. They are bringing an artifact aboard the Orville to be analyzed by an archaeologist. And the idea is that the Orville will attempt to find some way to make them share the planet. However, ultimately, if they cannot do so, then whoever's DNA is on the artifact gets to colonize the planet and maintain ownership of it. Of course, there's a bump in the road when the archaeologist that comes aboard is Derulio played by Rob Lowe, who we saw in episode one, and he is the Discount Bullion, the blue guy who splooges blue stuff everywhere when he uh, ejaculates, it seems. The episode starts out with Kelly singing karaoke in the mess hall, and she does a pretty decent rendition of Any Way You Want It, and then we see Ed looking at her kind of adoringly. And then we are deprived of Bordas singing My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion, which bums me out. I so wanted to see Bordas sing. They have now alluded to it twice, and I need the payoff. I gotta hear those pipes. He has such a lovely speaking voice. I, I imagine he sings quite well, so I would love... I want to hear Bordas sing. There's also this throwaway line about Bordas and Clyden's relationship being a little bit rocky right now because of the, the baby. And I hope that they follow up on that or something because I kind of care about those characters and they didn't really give us any more, much more Bordas that episode. There's also an uncomfortable plot with Yafit and Claire that's caused by Derulio's presence. So basically what happens is the Navarians and Bruidians come aboard and then Derulio comes aboard. And as soon as Derulio comes aboard, he shakes hands with Ed and with Kelly, and both of them are being influenced by hormones, uh, I'm sorry, pheromones, because he's in heat. What this does is then make them start acting like teenagers, and they fall in love with him. And through... Uh, touch it. He trips over Yafit and then gives, infects him with the hair pheromones, and then he gives flowers to Dr. Finn, and then she's infected with the pheromones. So there's a really uncomfortable subplot between Claire and Yafit because of that, and a really strange and kind of fun subplot with Ed, Kelly, and Derulio. The problem is that it just goes on for way too long, and also the build-up, it just makes it seem like Kelly's negligent in her duties, which... I understand why they did that, but the way they portrayed it was just kind of strange. And it was to the point where both the captain and the first officer are acting completely childish and putting this incredibly important peace talk at risk because of these alien, this alien's pheromones. And fucking Derulio, like, doesn't care. He literally doesn't give a shit until he sees the two fleets about to fucking blow each other up. And he doesn't understand the concept, I guess, that other cultures might not be as chill with sex as his culture to the point where maybe you shouldn't infect random people with love pheromones without their knowledge. And the issue is that he knows he's in heat. If it was something like he didn't realize this was happening, that might be one thing. But he clearly knows this is what's, what's happening, and he doesn't do anything about it. And there were just, I don't know, some troubling portrayals in this episode that I think, especially with the current political climate, are just not timed super well. And it's not their fault. I know these episodes were produced a while ago. I'm not saying this is a commentary on what's going on or anything like that. It's just unfortunate timing for when people are being extra vigilant about stuff like this. And so Ed is trying to fuck Derulio, as is Kelly, and there is some fun stuff with Ed being gay, although there's some uncomfortable laughs about it and, and like reactions towards it from 
other crewmen that I think in this this future time we realistically wouldn't have anymore but I did enjoy the kind of normalizing of it and I have to say that Seth MacFarlane and Rob Lowe kind of had some chemistry in their scenes it was really cute <laughs> I kind of wanted it to be a thing I shifted a little it was adorable so I feel like if they had condensed that down a little bit and if they had made Derulio more cognizant of what was happening and more aware of when it was going wrong and maybe made him more proactive in trying to help, it would have been a little bit better. Also, Derulio is adorable and charming, but he's just basically Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec, but in space. And I can't say I didn't like that because I loved Chris Traeger. He's so, he's just precious. He's so pure and wholesome. But I think with Derulio, I, I think the sexual aspect of it made it just a little bit weird. And I think his just complete lack of concern for so much of the episode was kind of problematic when it was very clear that duties were being shirked to the point of dangerousness multiple times. There were multiple times where he should have become concerned enough to alert the rest of the senior staff of what was going on. So I felt like that kind of made this episode hard to completely enjoy. And there, the weird thing is there were scenes between Claire, Claire and Yafit that I didn't hate. The sex scene was really weird, but I guess, like, you gotta answer the question of how you'd have sex with a gelatinous life form. And... The scene in his quarters where he's explaining how his bed works was just kind of interesting and entertaining. And... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this episode. <laughs> I would say... It's not my favorite episode, and they close out the episode by basically having them engineer a date rape drug with the pheromones to make these two aliens fall in love with each other against their will, so the representatives for the Bruidians and the Navarians just, just are a thing for a while, and of course it'll wear off, and then that's going to be really uncomfortable. Hope they don't feel violated or confused or anything. And... Then it turns out that the artifact had DNA from both of their species, and so it's all okay, I guess. And finally we find out that it's a potential situation that Derulio was actually in heat in the first episode, which kind of retcons how responsible Kelly was for her cheating, since clearly his pheromones are strong enough to make people act completely just bonkers. But... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this episode. I don't feel like it asked any super meaningful questions or really presented any new sci-fi ideas or even any particularly interesting retreads. It was just kind of meh. I, I wouldn't say that I, I hated this episode. I would just say that I think that the Orville has had better episodes and I'm sure they'll have better episodes in the future. I might make a trailer reaction video because I haven't seen the trailer for next week's episode yet, but since the title is Firestorm, that sounds like it'll be a fun episode. So that's everything I have for you on this. Let me know your opinions on this episode in the comments down below. If you disagree and you loved this episode, that's totally fine. I'm glad that you liked something that I didn't love as much. If you <laughs> like my videos, subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you want to know when I post. If you dislike my videos, I am sure that you'll tell me. So that's everything I have for you, Peter Sane.